level. I think this is everything we need. Oh, this is so civilized. Real coffee, fresh bread, sunshine. Max and Susanna. <laughs> oh, I must admit, I won't be sorry to see them go. Perhaps not as pleased as you will be. Oh, Mum, I told you. It's OK, really. Though somehow I don't suppose this is the last I've heard from Max about wanting Thomas and Alice back. <laughs> what do you want me to do, Susanna? Just let Patricia have her own way over Thomas and Alice. If it was Matthew or Emily, you wouldn't like the idea of handing them over to some stranger for the rest of their life. No, of course I wouldn't, but they're not like Alice. It's not her fault she was born with Downs, for God's sake. Why punish her? Yeah, I can't believe you've been so selfish about this. No, you're the one who's been selfish by expecting me to look after her. And it wouldn't be me bringing her up. You're always working late. Oh, I see, so it's my fault now. Is it because of my career? May I remind you that you wouldn't even have a job if it wasn't for me putting so much time into the restaurant in the first place to make it successful. Yes, that's right. The truth hurts, doesn't it? Max, this isn't about scoring points of each other, for heaven's sake. I'm trying to be honest with you about this. I've always been honest about this. Remember when you asked me what I'd do if I was in Patricia's place? If I were pregnant and the baby were handicapped? I told you then, I wouldn't go through with the pregnancy. Alice is one of the reasons you and Patricia split up. You told me so yourself, because you couldn't give her the attention she needs. I don't want that to happen to us. This is different. Um, sorry. Your taxi's here. Uh, yes, right. You better say goodbye to the children. They're in the studio. Come on, Max. The flight leaves in a couple of hours. If you don't get in this taxi with me, you may as well not come home at all, at least not to me and Matthew and Emily, because we'll be out of your life. It's up to you. What are you doing? I'm taking the rest of my stuff. To Chelsea's? No. I'm going, leaving, like you wanted. Going where? Does it matter? Georgia. Here, you can have that back. Keep it. I'll, look, I want you to keep it. I don't want it. George, come on, don't be like this. Oh, sorry. How selfish of me being upset because you want me to leave. Tut, tut, Georgia. I don't want you to leave. You have to leave. George, I can't stand this anymore. I can't risk Mum and Dad finding out. Right, look, what if Dad had walked in earlier the other day and we were arguing? What if he'd heard something? It's bad enough the Farnham's knowing. What if they suddenly decide to tell Mum and Dad, George, this is cracking me up? There's no need to take it out on me. Well, who else am I going to take it out on? I've got no one else to talk to. George, we can't take this risk anymore. You know that. Okay. Come with me, then. We'll get a flat together. Mum and Dad can't walk in on us then, can they? George, please, look, I can't live like this anymore. You've said that before, Nat. You keep saying it, and then you come chasing after me. It was you who came running after me to the Cotswolds. It was you who came to see me when I was babysitting at the Farnham's after you'd said we couldn't see each other anymore. I'm just making the effort now to save you the trouble of coming after me again. No, I mean it this time. No, you don't. You're forgetting how well I know you, Nat. Georgia, I just said I mean it. What's up? Nothing. What are you doing here? It's lunchtime. Are you coming back home? No. I'm going. Leaving. Moving away for good. Why? <sighs> Ask your brother. Thanks. Here we are. 
See that, son? All done with my own pair of hands. Chose all the colours and everything myself. Can I get any? Yeah, sound, yeah. It's a lot bigger than the old place, like, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's our own little palace. Isn't it, love? Yeah. Any chance of a bit of dinner, kid? I'm starving here. <laughs> well, you know where the bread bin is. I haven't even got myself properly through the door after our luxury holiday. Yeah, well, it's... Well, yeah, I'll tell you what. I'll make the dinner, eh? Do you want some more? No, thanks. It'll have to be bus Heath. All right. Hey. You can play Lord and Master if you want, trying to impress him, but don't expect me to go along with this. I'm only trying to give the lad a good impression of us, aren't I? And does that include telling him about the past, eh? The drugs and everything? Yeah, well, I'll tell him in my own good time, you know. And it better be in the past, Jimmy, because I know you. <sighs> You're up to something. I'm not. I was only helping the lad out. I told you, didn't I? And what's wrong with that? Here's our son, isn't he? Hey, Dad. My man is all right about me staying here, isn't she? Of course she is, yeah. She just, you know, a bit tired after the journey, that's all. Now, you go upstairs and get yourself cleaned up. Mr Crosby looks exhausted. I expect you're such jet lag, eh, Dave? Uh, well, actually, Julia, I came back in the van. I know. So, how's your pack coping? You sure, right? Oh, yes, yes. She's fine, thank you. Ah, you don't have to worry about anything, Dave. I haven't breathed a word to anyone about it. Uh, I can't keep a secret when I put my mind to it. <laughs> if there's anything I can do to help you, Dave, you know I'm there if you need me, don't you? You know, if you want a little chat or oh, anything. Thank you, Julia. I yeah. appreciate that, but... Um, uh, I'm sure everything's going to be all right. Of course it will, love. As my mum used to say, God's good. Mum? Mum? Oh, I've just had a phone call from the hospital in, in Liverpool, and they say they, they want to see me as soon as possible. But your results aren't due yet, are they? I oh, know. It's malignant. It must be. You don't know that Mum, I said they wanted to see me straight away. They would never say that unless it was bad news. No. Then they simply need to do some more tests. Now, come on. I'll organise the flight. You go and pack, and Eric can look after the children. Oh, he can't. He's on his way to Nice. Then they'll simply have to stay at school a little bit longer until he gets back, won't they? <laughs> oh, now I'll sort everything out. Remember what your father always says? Where there's life, there's hope. Yeah, I got through it before. I can get through it again. Hey, Mum. I don't want it to come back. <laughs> Please make it go away. <laughs> Mum, is it all right if I have a shower, yeah? Yeah. There's a clean towel in your room. Where else have you been filling his head with, eh? You own a chain of shops, you've got a Mercedes, you're the Lord Mayor of Liverpool. Look, we want to welcome home the prodigal son, don't we? I'll get it. I'm warning you, Jimmy. Just don't push your luck with me. Hiya, Dad. Hi, babe. Oh, are you all right? Yeah. Good. Yeah. So, did you find him? I did, look, yeah. Oh, hi, is he? Uh, see for yourself. He's here. Jimmy! Hi. Visitor for your son. Right. Hiya, Jay. Come here. Oh, it's great to see you. God, I don't believe it. Look at your hair. Skin, I don't want, eh? <laughs> right, I'm off to see Sinbad. Leave you two to catch up on all the gossip, eh? See you later, see Dad. You, see you there. Oh, but Jay, it's great to see you again. Yeah, you too, kidder. So, you're going to give me all the gossip then and don't believe in out any juicy bits. <laughs> hello? Jean, hello. Everything all right? Why, what's wrong? Oh, really? Yes, yes, of course. Well, I'll, I'll meet you at the hospital. Sorry? Uh, yes. Yes, of course, I understand. Right, well, uh, I'll see you soon, then. Bye, Jean. Oh, hello, David. Oh, what a joke. Where's Max? Ah, oh, David. Max, uh, look, uh, I've just had a phone call. From Jean. Oh, she won't. Well, 
She's just about to leave for the airport with Patricia. They have to come back to Liverpool. Right. Well, apparently the hospital want to see Patricia right away. That's all I know at the moment. I'm going to meet them at this end. Right, come on. We'll go in my car. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, they won't be here for hours yet. And um, anyway, uh, I I'm afraid that uh, Patricia doesn't want you there. What do you mean she doesn't want me there? Of course she wants me there. I'm her husband. Max, don't be so arrogant. If Patricia doesn't want you there, then you shouldn't go. I've got to. What about my children? It may not matter to you, but they do to me. Come on, darling. If the altar route's clear, we should just make the plane. You've forgotten something? No. Just wondering. I may never see this place again. You'll be back. Come on, or we will miss the plane. To uni. You take care, eh? Aren't you going to say goodbye properly? Bye, George. It's really great to have you home again, Jay, even if you haven't been in touch for years. Right, I'm just nipping the shops, get something in for tea. You stopping for tea, Linz? I think Mike's doing ours tonight, Mum, thanks. Right. I'll, um, see you later, then. See ya. Oh. Oh, Mum. So, uh, so who's this Mike, then? After all the fuss with Gary, you know? Oh, we've been seeing each other for a while. Are oh, you really like him, Jay? He's dead good without Kylie. Yeah? So am I going to get to see me at least then, over? Of course you are. Oh, God. I should be picking her up from nursery. I've been that busy, Gavin. Right, I'm afraid I'm going to have to go. Jay, do you fancy coming with me? Uh, no, no, no. I'll pop round later. Right, it's OK. I've got to have a shower. See so, yeah. uh, See you now. See you, kid. Linz, I can explain it. Don't come anywhere near me. Is that head one? Yeah, but I can explain that. No, it's not what you think. Me and Mike ended up in prison in Thailand because of that stuff. Mike could have got the death penalty. And it's you bringing it through customs with me mum and dad with you. What if you'd have been caught, Jay? How could you do that to me mum and dad? Lindsay, please listen. Do you know, you could have got a life sentence with all that stuff on you. Are you some sort of dealer? No, of course I'm not. All right, look, Linz, I'll be straight with you, right? I used to have a habit, OK? But I'm over it now, yeah? I've done it. I've cleaned it out. I couldn't get shut of those slitting time. So I had to bring it through with me, yeah? But I don't do it no more. Honest. I, I was going to flush it down the bog as soon as I got here. I just haven't had a chance yet, that's all. How do I know you're telling the truth? Well, yeah, then. Take it. Don't bring that muck anywhere near me! Lindsay, please. Look, honestly, I, I don't take it no more. Honest, I'm clean. You're not going to tell me mum and dad about this, are you? I don't know what I'm going to do. But I know one thing. I don't want a smack head for a brother. My darling, I'm sorry. He insisted on coming. I'm 
sorry, it's just I had to. I don't want you here, Max. Please, I just want to talk to you just for a minute. Max, I think she's upset enough. Please. It's okay, Dad. Um, I think your mum go and um, tell them I'm here. I'll be fine. All right. Look, I know you don't want me here, but I have to come. Why? To convince me to let you have the children, if I... No. Well... You really pick your moments, don't you, Max? I'm about to find out whether I'm going to live or die. But don't let me stop you sorting your life out. Don't mind me. I'm really sorry. I, I just want you to know how much I care for Thomas and Alice and how much I want them with me if... if something does happen to you. And what does Susanna think about you wanting that? Well, obviously, she's still getting used to the idea. Max, I know Susanna doesn't want them. Because of Alice, because they're mine. And please don't try and pretend otherwise, because I overheard what she was saying to you this morning. Look, I admit that she is finding it hard to accept the idea. That is true. But if she doesn't want them, then I'd rather lose Susanna than Thomas and Alice. Max, then you'd lose Matthew and Emily. And I know you. As soon as Susanna had left, you'd want her back again, because that's what you're like. And there's no way you could cope with looking after Thomas and Alice on your own. No. I could. I know I could. I want to believe you, Max. Really, I do. I can't. I'm ready for you, Patricia. say goodbye to you. This could be the last time we ever see each other, Nat. I know that it's over between us. I just... I didn't want it to end this way. Neither do I. You know? I know. You've been waiting for me all this time. And you'd be so long. You always were late, weren't you? Me? It's you who always kept me waiting. By the time I got my own back. <laughs> You're such a liar, Simpson. <laughs> when did I ever keep you waiting? Oh, OK. All right, what about that time we both skived off school together? You kept me waiting for two hours by the bike sheds. You were early. You were late. It was freezing. It was snowing. I couldn't feel my feet. <laughs> Drama queen. <laughs> Anyway, you're thinking at that time we went to Brighton. We were waiting at Lime Street Station. Yeah, you were late then. Only by ten minutes. Oh, and the rest. Anyway, didn't quite make it to Brighton, did we? No, we ended up in that pub in Runcourt. Yeah, and that guy kept chatting you up. Oh, yeah. Played in a band. <laughs> and you sulked all the way to form because you were jealous. Wasn't. <laughs> Wasn't. <laughs> Just a bit. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. What well, in the past? Oh, she's been in there for ages. I keep trying to tell myself it might be a good sign and they could be telling her all the different treatments she could have, with the success rates. Jean, mm? if the news is uh, bad, would you mind if I came over to France? I mean, if she hasn't got very long left, I'd just like to be there for her. Of course I wouldn't mind. Mm. Jean, 
Where's Patricia? Is she right? She's still in with the consultant. Trish, what did he say? Oh, for God's sake, come on, tell me. Max, I've already told you I don't want you involved in my life. Doesn't matter if I'm going to live for five years or, or five weeks. I still don't want you and Susanna taking any responsibility for Thomas and Alice. And you're knowing what the consultant said isn't going to change that. You can't do this to me. You've got to tell me. Max, I haven't got to tell you anything. Patricia! Patricia! Leave her, Max. She does not have to tell you. It's her decision. Max, what's happening? How's Patricia? She won't tell me. What? She doesn't want me to know. She says it doesn't make any difference. How could she do this to me? trying to destroy me, cut me off from the children, from her, from everything. Calm down, Max. Calm down? How do you expect me to be calm when she's doing this to me? Calm down! It's all your fault. Do you realise that? My fault! If you were willing to have Thomas and Alice live with us, then Patricia wouldn't be doing this. Oh. She knew that you didn't want them. She's only stopping me from having the children because of you. Don't be ridiculous, Max. Whether I want the children or not is nothing to do with it. Patricia doesn't want you to have Thomas and Alice because she knows you're trying to win some sort of a competition over her. Anyway, you only want the children now because you're jealous Patricia's found someone else. How do you think that makes me feel? I am not jealous. Don't be so... Do you know, I can't believe you just said that. You can be so selfish sometimes. I am losing my children, and that's all you can think about yourself. Max? Danny? Danny! Danny! Danny, wait! Max, for heaven's sake, slow down! Do you know how to try? Danny! Danny, come back, please! I can always interfere. I didn't see him. He just ran out from nowhere. I mean, I didn't even see him. Oh, Max, quick, call an ambulance. Nat! Call an ambulance! Nat? What's happened? Oh, my God. Dan! You can catch up with this week's events in Brookside in not one but two omnibus editions, tomorrow at five past five and on Sunday at four o'clock.
He's been unconscious since it happened, but... And will there be any permanent damage? They're pretty confident. Dan. What have we done to him now? He's all right. They've told us that. It's just going to be a while before he comes to. It's all our fault. He saw us. Georgia, listen. Mum and Dad are going to want to know what's happened. We've got to come up with a story to get them fast. I'm not telling any more lies. The operation's over. Dan's in the clear. We stick to what we said. We don't know what happened. What's the point in lying? When Danny wakes up, he's going to tell him exactly what he saw. His brother and sister in bed together. Well, if we get to him first. Look, we've got to stay here so we can talk to him when he wakes up before anyone else does. So when is this governor's election meeting, then? Tomorrow. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, you know, sin. I mean, can you see me as a school governor? Yeah, why not? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm up against, uh... Holly Simpson and Max Farnham's missus. I mean, they've been to college. They're educated. They talk posh. They can make themselves sound important. Oh, so what? You're as good as them, any day. Eh? Not when he talks like he's off news at ten, and she'll probably come over like Virginia Bottom. I mean, people like that sort of thing, don't they? No, they don't, you know. Oh, maybe you're right. It's just that I get that nervous. You don't get up there making a speech. Well, what are you worried about? You got a big enough car, haven't you? All right, Bev. Changing the ball by you. So Ron's finally driven you up the pole, eh? This is serious. I'm not having Max Farnham send another kid to hospital. You what? Haven't you heard? You ran Danny Simpson over last night. Poor mate. He never. I'm not joking. My Ron hasn't slept a wink, you know. He's brought it all back to him. What happened? Apparently Max Farnham was driving like a madman and just smashed into the kid. Is he going to be all right? All I know is what his brother told me last night. He's still in a coma. He's a smart kid, that Danny and all. Or was. I mean, he could be brain damaged for all we you know. Max Farnham should be had up for that. And I put that sign up there to remind him how to drive. I mean, I'm not having my Josh's life put at risk by some idiot who fancies himself as a racing car driver. He needs to be told. Is this directed at me? You treat this close as your own personal racetrack? Don't be ridiculous. Inside, Max. Uh, Bev, did you actually see the accident? Well, no, but I heard the screecher break, so that was enough for me. I am not having her slandering me. And I'm not having you arguing with her in public. Maybe he'll take that down until you get the full facts, you know. No way. Well, he's still got a driving license. That stays put. Just ignore her and a stupid sign. I feel so terrible. But it wasn't your fault. If anybody's, it was mine. That stupid row in the car. You were upset about the children. And all this ridiculous business over Patricia's test results. That poor boy. I know. I saw his face just before you hit him. He looked as if he'd seen a ghost. And then Nat and Georgia coming out half-dressed. Same guilty expressions on the faces as I saw when I caught them at it in the Cotswolds. I, I could have killed him. What if it was one of my own children? I really should be at the hospital. I'll come with you. Thanks. Under the circumstances, um, do you think I should pull out of this parent-governor election? No. We haven't given Matthew's problems a single thought this week. Well, it's just that I'm a bit nervous, that's all. You'll be fine. I wonder if Nat and George will be there. If they are, I don't think you should say anything. Not for the moment, perhaps. But if there is one suggestion that I'll be prosecuted over this accident, then I won't hesitate to tell the truth. Flittens, you can't say it's your own brother's room, you know. I'm worried, Mike. Well, it mightn't be drugs. You told me it was. It might be something else. Like what? Well, I don't know. He might just be showing off, maybe. I know it wasn't. Well, if it is drugs, he must be off his cake. Why do you actually get involved in that stuff? I don't know, Mike, but I can't stand this. There's my dad, and now my own brother. Here it is. It looks like that's 
smack Gary planted on us. What do we do? Do we get rid of it? Oh, no, I reckon you just tell your dad, let him sort it. Do you reckon RJ was going to sell this? Well, I don't know, Linz, but, um, you know, if you don't want to get involved in this, just tell your dad, will you? Are you so pleased at having us all together again? This will destroy him, I mean, Mum. Look, Linz, this is serious. You've got to tell him. I just can't understand why he ran out. And had you upset him? I know what you like. I was teasing him, taking the mickey. I didn't even know he was home from school. What about you, George? I was upstairs in the bedroom. No, she didn't see anything. Oh, we've got to get to the bottom of it. It's not like Danny at all. He opened his eyes for a moment. <laughs> was he talking yet? Uh, no, no, not yet, but it's a sign he's beginning to wake up. Georgia, we've got to get to him before he wakes up properly. How can we? Mum and Dad are going to be here as well. He's going to tell them before we can say anything. Over. Yeah, yeah, a bit of rest, eh? Uh, I was just wondering, did you see any lorries parked outside my place this morning before I opened up? No, I didn't see anything, Ryan. Really. I'm just expecting a delivery, you know. Oh, well. So, uh, how was your trip to France? Oh, well, Provence was lovely, you know. We didn't expect to bring our little Jimmy back. Jimmy's treating him like the prodigal son. Yeah. Oh, hi, Val. She still won't talk to me, you know, Jack. Well, women don't like two times, then. It wasn't like that. Wasn't it? No. If I could turn the clock back, I just want her back. I don't know what to do about it. Well, you could always try a bit of groveling, I suppose. I'm serious, Jack. I was lucky your Val even looked at me in the first place and I blew it. And you won't mess her around again? No, I promise. Well, I can try talking to her if you like. Would you? Well, I don't know if it'll do any good, Sam. I mean, it's you that needs to convince her, isn't it? Give her another try. She's only over there. Local businessman with a strong commitment to the Manor Park area. Ex-coaching, boxing and football. So what do you think? School governor, eh? Mm. Long way from iron pumping bodybuilding fanatic. Yeah, well, I hope it's a bit more use than all that. Well, good luck tomorrow. If I had a kid in school, I'd vote for you. Cheers, Will. Mm. All right, guys. Cheers, Mick. Here's on wheels, calls. Val, you've not finished your drink. Really blown it with air, haven't I? I see you weren't warned, mate. I could kick myself. Well, you'd have to put it down to experience. I could find someone else. I don't want someone else. I want air. Why don't you give him another chance, Val? After what he did to me? He thought the world of him before all that with that fee one. Oh, look, I'm not like you. You've taken Jimmy back more times than I can remember. I don't want to end up like that. Yeah, well, I've made mistakes with Jimmy, I admit that, but... Well, Simbad's different, isn't he? I mean, he's a real decent fella, isn't he? He made a mug of me. He made a big mistake, that's all. I mean, come on, Val. He thought the world of you. He couldn't believe his luck when he found you. Now he's feeling really bad. Well, I should think so. And he made you happy, didn't he? Before you found out about the other one. You know he did. Oh, well, go for it, Val. Come on, life's too short. I don't want him to... Oh, I don't know. I don't want him silent up to me in the pizza parlor and us just drifting back together. I want something bigger than that. A real gesture. Something he won't go back on. Leave it to me, then. Why? What are you going to say? Leave it to you, big sis. All right. All right, Jim. Hey, listen, them fridges still haven't arrived yet, you know. Have you got a number I can ring just to G them up a little bit? Um, I haven't, no. Um... Looks in. I've got a bit of a confession to make. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Um, there aren't any fridges. I hope you're kidding, Jimmy, because I gave you a 1200 quid deposit. Look, Sam, I didn't want to con you. Oh, no, you didn't want to. You just couldn't help yourself. No, I'm dead sorry, mate. Look, I want that money back, Jimmy. Now! Well, I'm sorry I can't do that, Sam. Um, it's gone. Gone? And what? Living up in the south of France? No, it wasn't like that. I didn't spend it on that. It was for our little Jimmy. He was in trouble. What trouble? Sam, 
He got himself into bother, gambling debts and that. He was desperate. Yeah, so you called me to pay off his debts? No, no, I didn't want to do it, but I had no choice, mate. I don't earn that sort of money working for Mick Jono. Oh, and I'm loaded, am I? No, Sin, listen, will you? Look, our Jimmy, he was scared. These fellas who were after him, they were hard cases. They would have done anything to get their cash back. They could have put him in hospital, anything. And is he all right, is he? Yeah, I do. He's fine, thanks to you. Yeah, well, I'm glad your lad's okay, Jimmy. But it doesn't mean you can con me. I want my money back. Yeah, and you will get it. Just, just give us a bit of time. That's all, Sin. You're my mate. And I hated lying to you, but I was desperate. Honest, I was desperate. This is the last time I have anything to do with you and money. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. Look, Sin, you'll get it back. I'm telling you, I promise. Every last penny, mate, you'll get it back. I really, I'm really very sorry. How is he now? Um, well, he's still semi-conscious. I'm not talking yet, but he opened his eyes earlier. Oh. Yeah, the doctors are very confident. Oh, but sorry. we're still not really sure what happened. I mean, did Danny run out into the road, or, or was he already outside? Well, I mean, Matt and Georgia were in, but, well, they didn't see anything. But it all happened so quickly, didn't it, Max? Yeah, he seemed to come out from behind the bushes. Uh, he just came straight out in front of us. Right. Uh, well, we better get back inside. Will you give all the best of your Give our best regards to Bella. Thanks, Susanna. Mm. And if there's anything we can do. Yeah. Come on. Thanks. I just want to say thanks for not saying anything to Mum and Dad. You know, I told you that I didn't want to have anything to do with you and your relationship. Somehow we always seem to get involved, don't we? I should have told your parents the moment we came back from the Cotswolds, and if your little brother wasn't so sick, I would tell them this minute. So why don't you just sort it out? Please, we can't. If you don't tell them the minute that Daniel gets better, then I'll make sure that I do. And that's a promise. Top up, eh? Go ahead, boys. Help yourselves to another can if you want one. Right, bit of order. Let's have a toast to the Corkills back together as one big happy family, eh? The Corkills. The Corkills. Cheers. Welcome home, son. Good to have you back, eh? Cheers, Dad. Cheers, Mum. It's good to be back. So when are you going to start looking for a job? I hang about, love. Give him a chance, will you? Plenty of time to get that sorted. He's only just got back in the country, Annie. <laughs> I'll start looking tomorrow, eh, Mum? So what sort of thing will you be looking for then, Jay? I don't know, really, Mikey. Anything I can get. You can put a word in for him at the petrol station, could you, love? We've no vacancies just now. Ah, <sighs> thing is, going to be needing to get a bit of money together soon, aren't you, son, eh? Mm, yeah. <laughs> hey, maybe you could come in with me. Now I've finished my counselling course, you know. Might even be able to get myself a few bob together. Start up my own business, even. You're on the council. Not the council, soft lad. <laughs> What's he like, eh? No, the thing is, son, it's a long story, but what it boils down to is... He's done a few talks, you know, to a load of bad lads. The sort of person he used to be when he was younger. Lads who uh, pinched cars and burgle shops. That sort of person. Go away. I just be dad doing that sort of thing. Yeah, well, just... Just my way of helping out, you know. Anyway, listen, I'm just going to go and get a quick swill, I think. <coughs> hang on, hang on. Got loads to supper, yeah? Oh, I'm all right for a minute, Dad. Honest. See you later. What's all that about? You were going to tell him about the drugs? <laughs> yeah, so? I don't want him knowing everything that's gone on. Jackie is our son. I'm not ashamed of the mistakes I've made. Maybe you should have told him. Why? Oh, I don't know. Well, drugs, they seem to be everywhere these days. How do we know he hasn't been involved? He's been abroad and we don't know what he's been up to. He's already tried to fob us off with that foreign legion fairy story. 
All right, all right, we know. He's just like you were at his age. Your dad told me he'd worked his way around the world on the merchant ships. The only boat he'd ever been on was the New Brighton Ferry. Did I? I don't know, Jimmy. I just... I just want to be sure he's finally settled down. Yeah, all right, love, look. Just give him a chance, will you? He will. Oh, no. Look, look at that. Max, just ignore her. Take that down, please. No, I won't. That mentions me by name. It's defamatory. I could have you in court for that. Do what you want. You just want to get out of being done. You couldn't care oh, less about the kids on this place. sake, Max, just walk away. It's coming down. Look, let me pass. The placard is coming down. No! And you move one more muscle, I'll have you for assault. This is not my fault. I was not speeding. Tell that to the court. No change. Look, we're going to go home, freshen up a bit. You two coming? No, it's all right. We'll stay. Well, you've been here all night. We'd rather stay. What about uni and work? It's OK. This is more important. Look, we'll call if there's any news. Well, you will read straight away. Yeah. OK, we'll see you later. This is Gulf to Romeo, Romeo. Bing to Angela. Come in, Angela. Are you receiving me? Oh, um, I, I was uh, uh, just trying to get the um, shipping forecast. Uh, yeah. uh, any news on young Daniel? Well, he's uh, he opened his eyes for a second, but he's still unconscious. Ah, but he will come round. Yeah, any time now, they say. Oh, that's a relief. Thank God for that. Look, I'm going to phone the solicitor and uh, make an appointment to see them about the children. Oh, so you're still determined to make a stand on this custody business, eh? Completely. Listen, have you thought about the pain you could cause the children? I mean, you've just been out there, you've seen them. They're happy, it's a beautiful place to grow up in. Whatever you might think about Eric, he certainly proved himself when it comes to caring for the children, particularly with little Alice. He's positively blooming over there. Do you want to drag them away from all that? That's not the point. Look, do you know what your problem is, Olson? I'll tell you. It's dented pride. Just like my pride was hurt when I realised I messed things up with Jean. So, you and her, there's no chance of a reconciliation? No. No, but it's uh, given me the opportunity to do some other things in life. Do you know? I've had more girlfriends out of this thing than um, Jean ever had a clue about. Why don't you just accept what you've got? No, I feel I've been robbed. No, that's nonsense. You've got Susanna, you've got Matthew and Emily, and if God forbid anything did happen with Patsy, you wouldn't lose touch with Thomas and Alice. We could go out and see them together. No, I don't know that. I don't know that at all. For all I know, she could work it so I never see them again. Patricia would never do that, do you? Well, how do I know that? You won't even tell me the results of a hospital test. Listen, Max, you're not exactly going to endear yourself if you persist in this futile custody battle. Give her her divorce. Give her the chance of happiness with Eric. That way she could see that you've matured and well, she might let you get involved. I mean, she's been through so much, Max. Please, please, don't cause her any more unhappiness with all this talk about fighting for custody. No. I can't just give up like that. I can't. You've got to tell them, Liz. I can't. You see my pastelings? No, I can't find it anywhere. Are you for this week's catalogue money? Oh, it'll do later, Mum. You're up to date. I was just thinking, why don't we get one of them Indian takeaway banquets for tonight? Oh, that sounds good. What's my purse? Well, you probably left it in work. Oh, right, uh, I'm getting off. Where are you going, son? Oh, I was going to slip up to Whiting and see a few of my old pals, you know. Oh, we're going to get an Indian. And then I thought us three could nip down to the swamp for a pint. What do you reckon, Mike? Oh, listen, I'm sorry, Dad, but it's all sorted. Uh, not a time, eh, Mikey? Yeah, sound, yeah. Here. Have a pint on me. You sure? Yeah, I'll take it. Go on. Cheers, Dad. Since when did you start to splash out the case? Oh, it's only for a couple of pints. And what if he gets into trouble out drinking? Oh, look, I might not even go out drinking. They are, look, he's not soft. He's not going to get into trouble. He'll be fine, you'll see. Yeah, thanks very much. Bye-bye. Was that the hospital? Uh, no, I was just ringing the solicitor, uh, making an appointment. About the divorce? About custody of Thomas and Alice. I see. 
David was going on about making a fresh start, going along with what Patricia wants, but how can I? They're my children. If the worst happens, they should be with me. You know how I feel about that. You coping time. No, Max. That's where you're wrong. I wouldn't. I thought I'd made myself perfectly clear. I'm talking about my children. And I'm thinking about us. You, me, Matthew and Emily is our future I'm interested in. Alice and Thomas will be fine. Oh, for heaven's sake, Max. Not if you're never going to see them again. You don't know that. I'm sorry, Max. But you're the odd man out in all of this. Everyone else can see it's for the best. I couldn't look after Alice as if she were my own daughter. I, I could pretend for a while, but... Inside, I'd know I couldn't care for her in the same way Patricia and Eric can. And I know eventually that it will come between us. And I don't want that. Change. Just look at us. Hovering over Dan's bed, terrified of him waking up in case we get found out. It's disgusting. We're disgusting. Don't touch me. What? We were kidding ourselves, Nat. We've been kidding ourselves for ages. This isn't love. It's sick. It's disgusting. Well, I love you. Just look what happened in that hotel. It was horrible. You were just using me. No. That's what it felt like. No love. Just sex. Sex without love. It wasn't. Georgia, I love you. We just keep hurting ourselves and everyone else. Then let's just go. Let's just disappear. I'm not running away. I couldn't, not with Danny lying there because of us. It's all gonna come out now. It's over. But I don't want anyone telling Mum and Dad about us. I want us to do it. Us tell them? They can't hear it from someone else, can they? Least of all, Danny. It's got to be us. I want to tell them everything. Excuse me, could I get through, please? I'm in a bit of a hurry. Hey, let him through. It's the little boy's dad. What's going on? We do need to stop dangerous driving on the coast. It's an AD or Danny. I really don't think it's necessary. It was an accident. Well, Max Farnham's got away with speeding far too often. I have a blocking the road. Can we show Danny anyway? Uh, he's improving, thank you. Mm. Yeah, doing as well as can be expected. You have to call me yet? No, not yet. Look, um, I really do have to get through. I have to be up to the school. Oh, perhaps you'd better walk. Absolutely not. I'm not having Beth McLaughlin telling me who can come and go. Come on. Right, girls, let him through. <laughs>
They don't move out of the way in five seconds. I'm driving through anyway. No, you're not. One. Two. Bev, I am warning you. Max, for heaven's sake, no. Three. I'm walking. Susanna, no! Look, this is just giving in to anarchy. I am not being late for my meeting. You can catch me up. Poor Ben. We gotta go before he wakes up, George. That's the only way. Look, I've thought it all out. We go home, we get our passports, we draw as much money as we can, and we just disappear. Look, if we tell Mum and Dad the truth, they'll disown us, we'll destroy them completely. George, it's better for them if we're not here. Look, come on. How many times have we talked about leaving and setting up home together away from Mum and Dad, somewhere where nobody knows us? They were fantasies, Nat. You said yourself we could never be a normal couple. Well, now we've proved it. No, we could do it. This is our way out. There is no way out. So, is this the uh, sum total of the parents who can be bothered to come? Oh, how many did we come to before this? Well, that's exactly where we're here now, isn't it? Okay, I must go and fill an hospital. <sighs> Nervous? Yeah, just a bit. Not used to all this public speaking, you know. Susanna's been on pins all morning. <laughs> See that, Max? A few butterflies in the tummy, perhaps, but that's healthy, isn't it? I'll be fine once I warm to my theme. Well, you're the best man or woman, will he? <laughs> And, darling, I would be grateful if you kept our personal life out of this speech of yours. I hope you don't mind me talking to you like this. Oh, you're joking, aren't you? You're the first one to wish me luck since I arrived here. I don't mind at all. You got any kids in the school? Yeah, just the one. She's in year nine now. I'm Elaine, by the way. I'm Mick. Pleased to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm just glad we've got a black guy standing. It's about time our interests are represented here. The kids aren't getting what they should out of school. Yeah, tell me about it. I've had a word with the other black parents, and what we want to know is why aren't our kids doing as well as they should? Hmm? As far as I'm concerned, there's a school that's letting them down. Yeah, but it's not only this school. Black kids are underachieving all over the place. Maybe I can improve things here, eh? Wish me luck. You might need a bit more than luck to put a black face on that stage. From what I can see, it's a bit of a closed shop. It's got to be here somewhere. I'll ask RJ if he's seen it. Oh, is he still here? He's supposed to be out looking for a job. Jay? Jimmy? Oh, he's not in here, Mum. He hasn't slept in his bed either. What? <sighs> he's only five minutes and he's done a book. I mean, what is up with him? All right. Where's our Jay? Wonder if you fancy going out for a pint when I finish. He's done one. Come on. His bed hasn't been slept in. He's done a runner. He wouldn't do that. Well, he didn't sleep here last night. Yeah, well, he's probably been out on the rise. Dossed down on one of his mates. What is he playing at, eh? <laughs> he breezes in and out of our lives, not a care for anyone but himself, not a thought for all the sleepless nights he's given me. What are these doing all over the show? I'm still looking for my peers, aren't I? You haven't helped yourself to it, have you? No, I haven't. Well, you were handy enough giving little Jimmy a turn that's nice. I haven't seen your flaming peers. Look, maybe RJ has. You what? Well, I... <sighs> are you calling your brother a thief? Are you saying he nicked your mum's peers? No, he wouldn't. <gasps> oh, well, I must be going soft. Why didn't I think of that? Well, there's only one way to find out. Hang about. You can't go searching your lad's room like that. It's my house, Jimmy. I can do what I like. Yeah, and he's your son. He don't do things like that. Jimmy, he's disappeared off the face of the earth. How do I know he hasn't helped himself to my money before he went? He did need the money for the gas bill that time. Lindsay, he was 13 then. Well, let's just have a look. He won't know any different, will he? This is your brother you're talking about here. Everyone seems to have forgotten the bold, visionary idea that brought us comprehensive education. We need to look at the whole educational system again, because in my view, the focus is wrong. As long as people have the option to pay for education, and now even the schools themselves can opt out, there will never be a cohesive, comprehensive system that can work. The money should be channeled into giving every child the best possible opportunity, no matter what their background, or how much money their parents have. The priority must be on providing clear standards of achievement and opportunities for all children, whatever their ability. Until education becomes a priority, 
we will not be turning out the citizens that this country needs for the future. Has someone told him this isn't the general election? Now, before I close, I'd just like to thank everyone who's passed on their good wishes for my son Daniel, uh, who's in hospital following a road accident. Uh, I'm, I'm pleased to report that he is recovering slowly. Going for the Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. You haven't heard anything yet, Mick. Wait until it's my turn. You've got it wrong. You'll have left her at the trading post, I know you. Surprise, surprise. I will kill him. I'll crucify him. Well, so much for your precious son now, eh? Listen, there must be a reason for it. Oh, yes. Because he's a thief. Just like his father used to be. I can't believe it. Empty. Look. Nice to know something like this had happened. Off his own mother. Oh, what does he care about me, eh? Going off. Me not knowing whether he's dead or alive. He doesn't care less about me. Mum, I should have told you this yesterday. What? Did you know about this? Oh, no. no. I saw him when he was in here the other day. He's getting undressed. He had this stuck to his stomach with sticky tape. It was. Come on, love. Me and Mike came back after he'd gone. We found it. It's drugs. Do you know anything about this? I knew nothing about it, love. I promise you. told us about this right away. Why didn't you see us, eh? You're supposed to be the big drugs counselling expert. Why didn't you suss it out? I don't know. I had no idea. He smuggled it. Me and you drove him through customs with this strapped to his belly. That muck's been with us all the way from the south of France. Good God, Jimmy. What if we've been caught, eh? I mean, how long is it for drug smuggling now? 15, 20 years? We could have ended up like our Lindsay was in Bangkok, jailed for something we didn't do. Well, he's had us, hasn't he? He's used us for mugs, Jimmy. At least I know he won't do a bunk, because he's going to come back for this poison, isn't he? Look, look, let's just talk about this. There must be an explanation. Them two fellas in Marseille, they must have put the arm on him. I don't care what his explanation is. I am not having drugs in this house again. I'm not having drugs anywhere near this family again. Why do so many kids end up playing computer games and watching the telly all the time instead of doing other worthwhile things? Us, us parents should be helping the teachers. I mean, if they're short of staff for team games, then why can't we come in and help them? Even after school hours and at weekends. And what about local businesses? I and mean, we should be courting local business, asking them to help us to turn out the sort of kids that they need. And I don't mean just the bright kids. I agree with what somebody said earlier that we need to keep an eye on the ones that aren't so bright, because they've got to find work when they leave school as well. And the ones who are going to have difficulties in life through all kinds of things, prejudice. But we can't leave it all to the school. What I'm trying to say is, us parents and local business have got to get involved. The teachers have got plenty to do. And yeah, we can ask all sorts of them, but there's only 24 hours in a day for them as well. So let's get involved, eh? And let's get involved properly. Let's give them a hand. Because they deserve it. And so do our kids. Mick, I'll open up. You're not going anyway. I want you to face your precious son with this loss. It's all right, Dad. I'll open up for you. OK. Thanks, Lens. See you later. There must 
be an explanation. Yes, there's an explanation. It's like father, like son. Don't blame me. Look, what are you going to do? I don't know yet. You're not going to go to the busies, are you? I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, all right. Where have you been, eh? Why did you rob my piss? Hang on, Jack. I told you lied to me, Jimmy. I found it in your room. Look, it's empty. And what about these, eh? What are you doing bringing drugs back into my house, eh? Why did you do it, son? Because he's a smackhead, that's why. Because he's a lying, sick, thieving, drug addict, that's why. Well, these are going where they belong. Well, no, don't. Jackie. <laughs> Jackie. This is where this rock belongs. It's not. That's proof you're hooked on it. Because it don't go with me and it can you. You're hooked on this, aren't you? Eh? Leave him, Jackie. in prison, for God's sake, Jimmy! Do you really want the likes of that in our house after everything we've been through? I understand it. I understand it. But we can't throw him out. That's the last thing we should do. I know what addiction's like. Yes, and so do I. Yeah, so we've got to help him. I can do it. Rubbish, that's rubbish. If I hadn't flushed that stuff away, I was to say you wouldn't have both been on heroin, eh? What? Will you ask your father? You ask your father! I am not having it happening again. And then it's only a bit of smack, right? It's nothing. Everyone does it. Shut it, will you? Just shut it. I was on that stop for nearly a year. There's nothing you can tell me about it. Do you hear me? Nothing. Yeah, me. Your dad. imagined for a moment that my children would attend a school like Brookside Comprehensive. And since my children reach school age, they've spent most of their time in fee-paying schools. But my circumstances changed, like they do for many women. I spent eight years as a single parent, so I know the hardships that many of you have been through. Oh, yeah. And I'm sure that dress came from the Oxfam shop. Uh, sorry, did uh, someone want to ask a question? No, it's all right, love. You carry on. Uh, right. Um, uh, where was I? Um, well, so I, I feel I could represent the interests of the many single parents who have children in this school. I know the problems you have with juggling work and looking after a child. I know what it's like when a child is sent home ill and the problems that can cause. I know about the problems with money, too. Uh, but what I really do know about is how domestic upheavals can cause children to fall behind with their schoolwork. My children have gone through enormous changes in the last eight years. It wasn't until recently that my husband and I discovered that both our children were underachieving. Naturally, when Matthew started at Brookside Comprehensive this term, we were very keen for him to find help. But what did we find? In the last six months, funds the special needs provisions has been virtually non-existent. I mean, can you believe that? My son has real problems and this school is doing nothing about it. Well, this isn't fair. How can my son be expected to pass exams and go to college or university if he hasn't been helped to master the basics of reading and writing? OK. I've got both our passports. I've drawn out to the limit on my overdraft. Let's go, George. No, no. I can't leave Dad. But he's going to tell Mum and Dad, and if he doesn't make his final will. That's why I've decided to tell them first. It's better coming from us. OK. But don't expect me to be here when they find out. I'm going, George, even if it means leaving you behind. Please don't go, Nan. I can't face this on my own. Then come with me. 
I can't face this at all. I'm sorry, George, but I want to get away. I want to be as far away from here as possible when they find out. All right, Max. Hey, I didn't know about your nothing. Well, like uh, Susanna said, we haven't known ourselves for very long. Uh, we didn't want to make a big deal about it. Look, um, don't tell Susanna, but I was really impressed by your speech. I thought you made some sound points. Does that mean I get your vote? Well, I've already voted. Uh, family loyalties, you know. Well, just a waiting game now. A moment of truth next week. <laughs> you confident? Uh, quietly. Your speech went down very well. I didn't realize you held such um, right-wing views. No, it's nothing to do with politics. It's just common sense. It's really easy. Yeah, bye. Look, I'd better get off to the hospital. Look, I think I might uh, pop in a bit later myself, see how Dan's doing. Yeah, that'll be fine. See you then. Bye. Hey, I was dead impressed with your speech. Yeah? Too right. You were brilliant. Oh, come on. You're embarrassing me now. Oh, you really did good. I must admit, at first I thought you were going to make a right show of yourself, but, um, no, you did good. Well, thank you very much. But don't forget what I say, eh? A black face might not fit. Well, perhaps I can get you to vote for me, then, eh? I already have. Oh, nice one. <laughs> good luck, eh? Cheers. Are you just chasing? Or are you on the needle as well? Both. Oh. Let's have your works. I haven't got any more here, Dad. Come on, lad, I'm not soft. There you go. Have you got any more stuff? No, that's the lot. The truth, Jimmy. I'm telling you, there's no more here. Look, it won't take two minutes to turn this place over, you know. Look, I've got no more here, honest. You were going to start dealing, weren't you? No, I wasn't. Jimmy, the truth. I'm telling you, that, that was just for my own personal use. Yeah. So why did you come back here, then? I wanted to come home, Mum, right? I couldn't take it no more. I was stupid. I got into a load of trouble out there, and I had no mates to back me up. It was just a nightmare. Taking smack was the only way that I could get through it. And then I wanted to get off the smack of a cuddle. I was scared in case I couldn't get on over here. So I had to bring a load back with me, just in case I couldn't get off it. I've ate everything now. Jackie, give him a chance, will you? It's the truth, Mum. I was just scared to come home without any. I'm sorry. Honestly, I'm really sorry. I'm just scared now in case I get sick. Now I've got none left. I'm more interested in your life. Yeah, I think my speech went rather well. I'm certainly a lot of sympathy for Danny. That's nice. Look, why don't you two go home for a rest? Your mum will be back from work in an hour, and uh, Max Farnham said he'd be dropping in. Oh, uh, we'd rather stay here. You've been marvellous, you know. Both of you. Well, I'd better get back and see the patient. Thanks, Farnham. I told you we should have left this afternoon. They can't hear it from him. They can't. George, they can't hear it from us either. He's still unconscious, then? Yeah. Well, perhaps, um, I don't want to intrude. Max, can I have a word with you, please? Well, uh... Look, please don't tell Mum and Dad. We don't want them to hear it from anyone else. Please, Max. You should have thought of that before you started all this. Well, don't you think we regret it now? It's over between us, I promise. Then why don't you tell your parents before they hear it from your younger brother? We can't do that. If you have an ounce of sense, I think you will. Do you know, I am sick of this. I have my own family to worry about. You tell them, OK? See, I told you it wouldn't help us. We should go now. Hey, come on, you two. He's woken up.
that? Look, Nat and George are here. And your mum will be in soon. Hey, Dan. I must call your mother. Where's Max? Oh, uh, he left. He said he didn't want to intrude. Right, well, I'll see if I can catch him up and tell him the good news. I'll call your mum. Dan. Dan? It's me. It's Nat. Listen, do you remember what happened? Oh, I'm starting to feel bad. A hot drink sometimes helps. Did you rob to buy heroin in France? No. I bet. And I'm never honest. Have you ever stopped taking it? I did once for about a week, but I felt really bad, you know. But if you stop once, you can stop for good. This is stupid. Can't you see he's lying? I'm not, but it's the truth. If my kids don't tell the truth. I know that from your father. I am. Evan, I've told you this is true. I don't believe you stopped. Look at you. You're sweating. You're desperate for drugs, aren't you? And when you ran out of money, you used to steal, didn't you? Oh, come on, love. We don't know that. Lots of addicts... I don't believe you, Jimmy. You've been through all this yourself and you still swallow this rubbish. Well, listen. I am not going through all this again. You're a thief, aren't you? Well, you've already proved that. And I know in here that you've been a thief and a robber since the first day you took that muck. I'm right, aren't I? Answer me. No. Jimmy, I want him out of my house. No. We can't do that. He's our son. I've been through it once, Jimmy. I can't go through it again. And I've been through it myself. And I got off it. It can be done. Jackie, trust me, will you? I'll sort it. I'll get him a job. We'll clean him up. We can do it, love. I'm sorry, Jimmy. I can't. I haven't got the strength anymore. I want him out of my house. Still in bed. Had to sit up half the night waiting for him to get up to sleep. This will wake him up. I'm having a smackhead sleeping the day away in my house. Hey, what's that, lot? He robbed me peace. I'm not having him robbing me gold and all. <sighs> Behave yourself, will you, Jackie? He's not going to do that. He's your son. Yes, and you're my husband. And when you were on that stuff, you didn't think twice about robbing my bracelets. The only thing that was mine. In fact, I'm very tempted to bolt that telly to the floor. Listen, love, I can help him. I know I can. All he needs is a job and a fresh start, that's all. Yeah. Well, you know what I want. Listen, I am not throwing him out. Once he walks through that door, he'll be back on the smack in no time. Jimmy, I want him out of here by the time I get back from work. Oh, just give us a chance to help him, will you? That's all. No, Jimmy, I mean it. Do you think he remembers what happened? I don't know. He must do. I can't stand much more of this, George. We're just waiting for this to blow up in our faces. Then why don't we just tell them? Why don't we just leave? Where are you going? To see how Dan is. Are you going to tell Mum and Dad? When I do that, I want you with me.
All right, Sid. Listen, I've had an idea about that money I owe you. Oh, it wouldn't be flood damage stock, would it? Look, I said I was sorry about that, didn't I? No. I think, as you know, I said our journey's been a bit of bother. Right, well, I'm trying to get him sorted. You know, back on his feet, like. Uh, what's that going to do with the 1,200 quid that you owe me? Well, he needs a steady job. You know, something a bit regular. So I was wondering if you'd, uh, well, fixed anyone up, you know, with your window around. Yeah, well, even if I did... Look, 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 listen, listen, the deal would be this, right? Our Jimmy had worked for you for nothing, right? Until he's paid back the 1,200 quid. No, oh, I'm sorry, Jimmy. Forget it. But, come on, it's the perfect solution for everyone. No, well, not for me, it isn't. And besides, I've already got someone sorted for the windows temporarily. Oh, come on, mate. Surely you can sort something for him. No, Jimmy, I'm sorry. And I don't want to see you again until you walk in that door with my money. Do you understand? Can't you give the dozy beggar a kick up the backside? I thought you said you were going to have a chat with him. Yeah, I was. I'm, I'm sorry, love. I've, um, I've just had a terrible... It doesn't matter. What's up, Jack? What's Jimmy done now? No, it's not Jimmy, Val. It's, um, it's little Jimmy. Wish to God he'd never written to you. Wish he was still in France. Oh, come on. You're bound to find it difficult when you haven't seen him for such a long time. Has he had a fallout with his dad? Well, him and Jimmy, I don't know. Mutual appreciation society, them two. I just thought, you know, everything that's gone on between the two of them and all that with me and Jimmy. That's all dead and buried. Yeah, I know. I didn't think he'd get on too well with his dad, you know. No. He needs him now, doesn't he? What's up, Jack? He's a heroin addict, love. Just like Jimmy. What? Lindsay found the stuff in his room. He brought it from France. Little Jimmy? I don't believe it. How could he do it, Ava? He's hooked on the stuff, isn't he? And I just want him out of my house. Jack. Hey. It doesn't even need to get over. Well, I'm sorry, son, but I've decided it does. Oh, it's just a waste of time. It'll do you good. I feel sick. No, you don't feel sick, Jimmy. It's withdrawal, you know that. No, I do. I, I feel too sick to, sick to dig. Listen, I have been there myself, remember? I know what it's like. I know you're not too sick to work. I am. Um, I feel that weak and look, I'm shaking here. Yeah. Oh, I just really couldn't do it. Look, it'll only last a few days. Get digging, will you? I'll be digging alongside you. Come on. Oh, it's just pointless, though, isn't it? And what about last night, eh? Hey? When you couldn't get off to sleep? Oh, Dad, I don't want another night like that again. Yeah. Well, you won't have that problem tonight, will you? Hmm? Hard exercise, physical graft is what you need when you're coming off, I'm telling you. Now, oh, come on, get moving. Man, it's boring. Oh, so is that why you started in the first place, eh? Because no, you were bored? No, no, I told you, didn't I? I? You know, I was in a real mess, Dad. I hated it. Then I met a few lads who were on it and... Well, you know how it is. So were you down, like, depressed? Yeah. So why are you still taking it, Jimmy, eh? Look at all the bother it's got you into. I wish I wasn't. I know what it's like, son. I've been there myself. I was well into it. But I stopped. Don't you want to stop? I don't know if I can. I'm scared of what it'll be like, you know, getting off it for good. Jimmy, we're talking about attitude here, right? You're talking about giving something up. I'm talking about stopping. Giving something up means making a sacrifice. Well, it's no sacrifice giving up that garbage, you know that, eh? What you're doing is stopping taking it. That means escaping its clutches, right? Not being a slave to it. Do you reckon that? Yes, I do reckon. I know, lad. I was there, wasn't I? I am going to get you off this stuff if it's the last thing I do. Now, come on, start again. Do the victory, eh? Look at the way he was a couple of years ago. Hopeless. But he pulled himself together and he got back to the way he used to be. Better than he used to be. I'm just scared, aren't I, Val? I never wanted anything to do with drugs ever again. But he is your son, whatever he's done. I know. Can't you give him another chance, eh? I know it's a risk having a junkie in the house again, but at least you know where he is and what he's doing. Think of what it would do for Jimmy. Boost his confidence. If he is successful, this might be what he needs to get him on the straight and narrow. Tuesday. 
Jackie Corkill said it was lovely over in that Provolence place. Yes, very nice. I'm surprised you're not over there still. You know, with your pap being so ill and that. Yeah. So, um, how did the tests go? The, the tests? Oh, we're just waiting for the results, Julia. Oh, after all this time! Oh, it must be terrible for her waiting so long. Yes. Oh, poor Pat. Still, at least she's got your gene over there to keep her spirits up, eh? That's right. I suppose your gene will just be staying there till the results are known. Well, she'll stay over there as long as she's needed, Julia. Uh, must get lonely for you on your own. I'm not on my own, am I? I'm with Max, Susanna and the children. Oh, I'm sure they're a great comfort to you. Yeah. We don't see you down at the over 55s much these days, Dave. No. As a matter of fact, we're having a whist drive this afternoon. I'm a bit short on good players like yourself. <sighs> yes, I'm very sorry, but uh, I have one or two things to attend to this afternoon. Will Mrs. Crosby be back by the end of next month, do you think? That's if your Pat's tests are all right, I mean. I'm really not sure. And we're thinking of running a charity to the Tower Ballroom in Blackpool, and your Jean would love it. Yes, yes, she might. Still, if she's not back by then, perhaps we could partner each other. I always thought we made a lovely couple cutting the rug. <laughs> Until our little misunderstanding, that is. Look, Julia, I'm afraid you're going to have to excuse me. I've got an appointment. What's your value? Uh, yeah. Did she mention me at all? We're running out of time, Sunshine. How do you mean? Well, I reckon there's just the slightest chance that she might, well, talk things over with you, but I think she's really knows the patience. Well, why didn't you send her over to the shop? Because it's got to be up to you to make the first move, you doozy pillock. And you got that into your thick edge, yes? Well, what if I ask her out this weekend? Oh, you willing to blow your last chance out by waiting till tomorrow? All right, tonight then. Simbad, I got the impression that she wants more than just a nice house. Yeah. Well, she needs to know you're serious, doesn't she? She wants a, a grand gesture, something special. She likes to be romanced, all Val. She always has. Well, what can I do? I mean, mind you, there was that time when I was going with Marcia. You know, when I had that message flashed across the scoreboard at Goodison Park. How about something like that? Oh, that'd go down really well with her, Val. Yeah? She's a lifelong Liverpool supporter. He said anything. Monkeys give me funny looks. He's been asleep most of the time. Are you gonna go in? I can't. Look, I'm just going for a coffee for your mum and I. Do you two want any? No, we're okay. Look, she thinks that you two should go home for a good sleep and a decent meal. She's worried about you. Oh, we'll find out, honestly. Well, there's no need for you to stay here now. The doctor says that Dan's definitely on the mend. All right, we'll see, okay? Yeah, well, you've done more than enough. You've been very supportive. Thanks. Right, that's it. I'm going. I've got my passport. I've got some money. I'm not going to be here when Dan tells them. Oh, don't now, please. He might not say anything. Oh, come on, George. Don't be stupid. Of course he will. Where will you go? Anywhere. The first man will fly out of Liverpool. Oh, I don't believe this. You've got it all worked out, haven't you? What am I going to tell Mum and Dad? No, I don't care. I'm going to be as far away from here as possible. So, have you thought about going home for a rest? Yeah, I said, um, I might go back get a couple of hours. Right, good. You deserve it. Oh, no, no, please. I should have done this a long time ago. They'll find out where you are eventually. They'll come looking for you. You know, I never wanted it to end like this, you know? Just a thought of never seeing you again. All right, one last chance. Will you come with me? Hey. George, come on, it's the only way. What have we got to lose? They're gonna find out. What if they call in the police? We haven't mentioned divorce. It didn't seem to be much point at my age. But I suppose I might get married again if I could find the right woman. Over. Finding the right woman hey. in England, Inga, might not be as easy as you would suppose. 
Over. Oh, I'm sorry, Dave. Over and up. Uh. <laughs> I thought you had a woman in here with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, um, just an old chum, you know, a fellow radio ham. Oh, <laughs> is someone a long way away? Uh, yes, yes, it's a chap I know in Norway. Mm. <gasps> Funny names they have over there. I always thought Inga was a woman's name. Uh. Well, you know, they do have some peculiar names there, that's right. Uh, look, if, if you wouldn't mind, I, I do have to get on, you see, I've got a few more calls. Well, I was just wondering if you'd like a cuppa before I go. It's a bit chilly out here. Oh, it'd be very nice, thank you. I mean, I could do you some soup and a sandwich. No, 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 there's no need, honestly. Oh, it's no trouble. No, really? <laughs> no trouble at all, Dave. Anything else you want, you just ask. <laughs> thank you. Where is he? Who? I presume that means he's still here. <sighs> Look, love, I can't throw out my own son, even if you can. Where is he? Up there. What's he doing? It's stage one of my rehab programme. Digging the garden? Yes, digging the garden. Hard work and exercise, love, it ties them out. They get so tired that they go to bed and sleep. None of this sitting up half the night obsessed with smack. And you've got to get them eating regularly again. Put a bit of shape into their day, a routine. I asked somebody to give him a job, but he's not in the market for any help, so... I'm going to have to ask someone else. No, Jimmy, I don't want him working around here. Love, he needs a job. I said no, I want him here. Well, we can keep an eye on him. What, are you going to let him stay, then? For the time being. If anything goes wrong, Jimmy, I'm telling you, he's out. Oh, it won't. Listen, you won't regret this. I know we can sort it together as a family. Look, the best thing is, he wanted to come home, didn't he? Hmm? And he wants to get off the drugs. Once that's in the head, love, you're halfway there. idea of them finding out from Dan. If he doesn't tell them, Max found them well. It's just such a lot to leave behind. George, there's nothing else we can do. Dan and Max might not tell. If we do go, just disappear, we'll never know what happens. We won't be able to say how sorry we are. We won't even be able to write and explain in case they don't know spend the rest of our lives wondering whether Mum and Dad know or not. I know that, but the only alternative is prison. How much longer till our flight leaves? Oh, 40 minutes. Going to Ireland's not exactly running away, is it? We can get another flight from there, somewhere. Look, should we have a drink or something? Do you want a vodka and tonic? Or how about coffee? Uh, tea would be good. What do you want? 
son. See you your orange juice. Eh, uh, wouldn't mind a bit of tomato soup, eh, Dad? Good idea. Plenty of off fluids helps when you're in withdrawal. Listen, we can go for a walk after this if you fancy it. Okay, yeah. It sounds good, Dad. Look, I know it's hard, but I'll get you there. You stick with your old fella, do you? Okay, Mrs. Howard, liver and bacon today. See you on Monday. Thank you, Dick. See ya. Bye. Well, I like Val. Fancy bumping into you like this. I'm busy. Look, I just want to talk to you for five minutes. I said I'm busy. All right. One minute, then. Oh, look, I've got customers' dinners going cold here. Well, all right, just let me walk around with you. Oh, if you're going to follow me around like some lap dog, you might as well make yourself useful. Here, Ow. take these. Ow. Oh, look, Val, I just... I just want to say that I'm sorry for all that stupid business with you and Fee. Is, is that it? Well, yeah, you know. I'm sorry. I'm very, very sorry. Hello, Val. Here you go, Mr. Singleton. Liver and bacon today. Thank Enjoy you. your dinner. See you, mate. Oh, Val, hang on, please. Val, can't you see how I feel about you? Here you go, Mrs. Yates. Can you believe this? <laughs> well, please, I promise you, I'll never do anything like two time and you never, ever again. If you'll just give me another chance. How can I ever trust you again? You can, I promise you. All that business with fees finished. You were the one I wanted. Well, I'm still not convinced. What have I got to do? Well, you could tell me how you feel for a start. Well, what do you mean? <sighs> Three little words. Well, yeah, of course, I love you. And I know I should have told you when we were away in Abbasoch. Well, I'm a fool, a stupid fool. And, and I was scared. I didn't want to frighten you no, off you by rushing into things. Yeah, Mrs. Izzy, didn't I? Yeah. What do you think, Mrs. Jackson? He's just told me he loves me. Well, I do, don't I? Mm. Wonderful, I think. Yes. There you are. That's off, Mrs. Jackson. So come on, Val. What do you say? Oh, Val, please don't ignore me. All right, prove it. Prove that you love me. Prove that you're committed. What are you now? Val, I love you. And what else? Well, that's it. Well, up until three weeks ago, we were engaged to be married, weren't we? Oh, well, if you're not serious. Val. Val, will you marry me? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Val, will you please marry me? And I promise I will never mess you about ever again. Marry me. I still can't hear you. Uh, can you hear him? No, we can't hear him. Val, would you do me the great honor of agreeing to marry me, please? Of course I'll marry you. <laughs> Come on, let's go before we embarrass ourselves. <laughs> Hello. I think you've gone home. Oh, uh, no. Is Danny still asleep? Yeah, he's absolutely exhausted. Can I, um, talk to you and Dad outside for a minute? What's the matter? I just need to talk to you. Right. I'll go. You stay here. No, um, I need to talk to both of you. Is it, George? Seeing Dan in there. His accident. It's 
make me realize. What's the matter? Go on, George. Matt and me. I can't stand the lying. Matt and me. I've been in a relationship for six years. Not just as brother and sister. Sexually. What? You and Nat? You and your brother? Is this a joke? No. I'm not joking. It's why I couldn't live with Martin. It's why Nat couldn't live with George. from you for years. I can't do it anymore. I'm sorry, Nat. I had to tell him. Some pretty funny painkillers get the comedy rolling next here on 4, and it's a deadline disaster for Caroline in the City, and over on ITV shortly in Suspicious Circumstances. to shout. It's... Oof. Let's get that down. Oh, no, sir. You will Can't face that. Hey, come ahead. Good English breakfast is what you need to get you off on the right foot. And when you've had that, I want you to do something for me. Oh, not more gardening again, surely? No, soft lad. I want to see you round at the petrol station apologising to your mother for all the grief you've caused her. <sighs> grovel if you have to. I don't grovel. Oh, don't you? Well, you try it for once. And when you've done that, I want to see you back here when I can keep an eye on you. Down the hospital. Danny had a comfortable night. Oh. One must not be. Of course, there's tea. Just leave it. I'll do it. Come on, you two, or you'll get your uniforms dirty. Careful. Morning, Sue. Morning, Bev. Happy little things, aren't they? Makes me broody. Really? Hey, have you heard anything from Miss Pat lately? She must be having the time of her life in France. All that posh nosh, garlic, spaghetti. 
My Ron hates all that, but I love it. Quite. Well, I'd better get on. Morning, love. Morning, Ron. See you later. Hey. Guess who I've just seen? Who? Corkill's flaming son, walking around like he owns the close. Are you joking? Didn't even know he had a son? Oh, oh yeah. Paul Michael reckons he's a right idiot, but apparently he's going to be moving in with them for a bit. One big happy family again, eh? Well, Ron, now you come to mention it. What? Happy families. Bev, I was being sarcastic, love. Yeah, I know that, but... But what? Well, I've just been thinking about the couples on the close, and, well, there's Max and Susanna. They've got two kids. Now you come to mention it, he's got another two in France. And Mick Johnson, he's got two kids. And even the Corkills have got two. Where are you getting at? Well, why don't we join the club, eh? 2.4 kids and all that. Well, Josh is nearly three, and you don't want him growing up being an only child, do you? He's getting lonely, I can tell. Beverly, my love, we are not having a baby. But, Ron, these are childbearing hips, and my body clock's ticking away. Yeah, and what about my body clock? The battery nearly ran out last year, remember? You're in your prime. All those low-fat fromage frais, they've done you wonders. You're healthier now than you've ever been. Oh, go on, Ron. Bev, we are not having a baby, and that is final. Not as far as I'm concerned. Ron, I want this child. And if this means you slipping a disc or having a few palpitations, well, that's fine. This is important. Glad it's out in the open. No, I want to think. I haven't said two words about it. Just went upstairs and closed the door. I think I'm glad. But then... I expected something to happen. Something's got to happen, hasn't it? Hi, sis. Well, are you two back together then, or what? <clears throat> well, it's a bit more than that, Jack. Um, you might want to sit down. Have a stiff drink. Why? What's up? <sighs> you blind or what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, congratulations, <laughs> Lord. Oh, congratulations. Well, hi, hi, hi Jack. You have been changing my mind. Thank you. <laughs> It. When did all this happen? He proposed, Jack, over a cold liver and bacon and rhubarb pudding. Oh, was the romantic ace in? Oh, I'm made up for you. I really am. Let's see the ring. Oh, look at the rocks in there. Hey, she had me out at 8 o'clock in the morning looking at jewellery shop windows. Wanted me to make it official, you know, in case I changed my mind. Anna didn't want any other women thinking he was available. Does Fee know yet? Yeah, well, no one does. We wanted you to be the first scene as you got us back together, you know. Oh, why are you listening to him? We? Ah, oh, we know, is it? Ah, uh, yes, Mick, it's official. I'm engaged, I'm a fiancé, and I've got the ball and chains to prove it. Oh, nice one, mate. I made up for <laughs> you. And you, Val, congratulations. So when's the big day, then? Well, it's gonna have to be soon. I want to do it before I'm 40. <laughs> Which is in January, so we've got to get cracking, the other boy. <laughs> right, well, we'll see you later, then. Come on, mate. See you, mate. Take care, now. Cheers. Sure. <laughs> I'm made up for you. Make a smashing couple, don't we? Yeah. I'm really made up they finally got it together. I know it was a time when I thought he'd never take him back. Well. I think he's learnt his lesson now. That's Stacey P. You love time. Where are you going, all dressed up to the nines? Brookside comp. Find out who's been voted in as parent governor. Hasn't Susanna Farnham gone for that? Yeah, and only Simpson. I mean, I probably don't stand much of a chance, but you can only try, can't you? I mean, someone's got to try and make a change in that school, Jackie. Well, best of luck, eh? You give him what for. <laughs> well, if I get voted in, I'll certainly try. See you later. Trollo. Mum. Mum, say something, please. What do you want it to say? I just want to... What? You've already told them everything they need to know. I had to. No, you didn't. You've ruined everything. 
everyone. Why well, didn't you stick to the plan and just come away with me? Oh, Ollie, morning. Glad I caught you. Thought you might have gone over to the school. Don't you want to find out the result of the apparent governor elections? Susanna left half an hour ago. Ah, uh, no. Has something happened? Not young Daniel, I hope. No. Um... Dan's fine. Oh, thank heavens for that. Um, actually, um... After the uh, near tragedy of last week, I, I thought you'd be glad to know that the BRA has commissioned a feasibility study on the installation of road bumps on the close. You know, these uh, sleeping policemen. Actually, it's all thanks to young Beverly's efforts. I must say, she's expressed very strong opinions on the matter, and she's... Look, I've got to get out. Uh, we need tea. Tea bags and milk. You, is he? What's all the rush? He had psycho in that shop over there, right? She just threw me out. As soon as she heard my name, she barbed me. Take the notice of her. She's got it in for us. Always has done. Yeah. I'll be like this. Oh. Bang goes my diet. Thanks, love. It's been ages since someone got me a box of jocks. So what have I done to deserve these? Well, that's my way of saying sorry, isn't it? For all the trouble I've caused you. You know, it's always you, isn't it, that gets it in the neck? And then it's my fault. I hear what you're saying, Jimmy. But I know too many people whose lives have been ruined with drugs. One way or another. When I found out that you were... A junkie. I know you haven't been too happy with me in my mind. I know I've been... banged out of order, but... I am, I'm trying to get off it. Honestly, I am. I, I'm trying to get myself straight, but I want to need you and my dad's help. I want to help you, Jimmy. But I just don't know if I can. I don't understand. I mean, my dad, right? My dad, he's there. He's all there for me, but you... you you've just turned your back on me. It took me a long time before I saw that the only way to help an addict is to be tough. When your dad was on smack, he robbed and cheated me for his fix. Nearly killed me. And I'm not giving you hard time just for the sake of it. It's for your own good. Yeah, I know. I know. Right. I want to help you, Jimmy. But it's hard for me and all, you know. All I ever do is struggle with this family, love. And I'm tired of it. All I want, Mum, right? All I want is just a chance to prove I'm on the level, yeah? What are you doing, eh? Oh, you wouldn't deprive me of a pack of chewies, would you? You know, spend me a nice bit of dough on them chocolates. Kids, eh? <laughs> Thanks, love. Eh, uh, that's five pounds, love, Tom. That's five, Chase. That's fine. All right, love. Tra.
Have you heard? The parent governor election. It was very close, but Mick Johnson scraped it by one vote. Oh, I can't believe it. Out of all of us, I never thought he'd be the one to win. I mean, at least if it were you or I, we could rely on proper representation. I mean, I can't see him being able to get anything done. Goodbye to you, too. Ollie, Ollie, the door. I forgot the tea. Let's go, shall we? Go where? We should go to the hospital, see Daniel. Dan, you don't think... No, no, we would have realised he would have behaved differently. Just drive, Ollie, to the hospital, see Daniel, we have to. Why are children that... I don't know them anymore. Just drive, Ollie, I can't even think anymore. Sunshine. I don't know what you're talking about, Mum. One more time before I knock you into the middle of next week. Now, you stole 200 ciggies from my shop. Where are they? What ciggies? Has she gone through the loop? Or... I'll through the loop, you! All right, all right. No need to hit him, love. Oh, that father like flame and soul. Well, it were right. Oh, they were right, weren't they, eh? Oh, Hill's nothing but trouble, a lot of you. What have you done, Jimmy? I haven't done anything. Jimmy, I took me stock check. You stole 200 ciggies while my back was chained, didn't you? Oh, well, it's not my fault you can't count, is it? Oh, you have them over you. I am not losing another job through drugs. I haven't got them. Look, listen, calm down, will you? Maybe you've made a mistake. You move. Find them yourself. Dad, I, I don't know what you're talking about, honestly. Don't you? Well, you better make sure that she doesn't find anything in there, then, hadn't you? How are you feeling? It hurts, Mum. Doctor said you'd be ready to go home soon, on the mend. Do you want anything? Juice? Magazines? No. Do you feel up to talking? What happened? Why did you run out into the road? It, it was... What? It's all right, Dan. We're here. I don't know, Dad. I just don't know. I'm tired. I want to sleep. Is you, Jimmy. All over. You've got them back, haven't you? No one will know any difference. I'll know. <laughs> well, it's just like old times, isn't it? Hey? Me lying and covering for you will no more. Jackie, it's not his fault. It's an illness, a disease. He's a junkie, Jimmy. Do you think I don't know? See you on. I lived with you when you were on smack, didn't I? I know what it's like. Oh, look, you're talking about me as if I'm not even here. Well, look, you can argue to the blue in the face. I'm going to Lou, not listening to this. Well, that's right, you go away. Well, you don't want to listen, do you? Jackie, the lad needs our help. I can help him. We both can. Look, you got me through it, didn't you, eh? Why can't you do the same for your own son? He's your son, not mine. I want nothing more to do with it, Jimmy. He's your flesh and blood. And I want him out of this house. I've had drugs up to here, Jimmy. I haven't forgotten the times, you know, that I'd come back and find you lying there, zombied. Every time the door would go, I'd think, oh, well, this is it. They found him dead. And it'd kill me, Jimmy. I can't. I just cannot go through this again. But I didn't. 
die, did I? Hmm? I got through it. And all little Jimmy can get through it and all. I just can't stand back. I'm watching ruin our lives, Jimmy. Do you know when you were on it? I mean, when it was really bad, you know. There were times when I wished that you were dead. And I just don't want to think that about me, son and all. Oh, there are, there is. Look, he's climbing out the window now for his fix. Where do you think you're up to? Get down. Where are you going, Jack? I'm going to return this stolen prophecy. You're welcome to him. You two deserve each other, don't you? Get in, you. I'd like to know who got the school governorship. Yeah, Susanna told me. Eight by one vote. Well, he gave me a good run for me winning, like, but uh, I suppose the best man won, eh? Yeah, congratulations. Listen, uh, is everything all right with your Danny? Yeah, everything's just fine and dandy. Thank you. How was Dan? <sighs> Coffee. Is that Dad? What's he doing? There you go, love. Oh, Tara. Hey, will you sit down, please? You're making me nervous. Thanks. Oh, I feel daft coming here and imposing on you. Hey, will you be soft? When have you ever imposed on me? Well, my family has. Too many times. I tell you, Ron. God gave me one hell of a cross to bear. So Jimmy wasn't bad enough. Now I've got Jimmy Mark too to test me. Trouble. Well, we named him well, didn't we? Little Jimmy's his dad all over. Flaming useless. I'm sick of the pair of them. <laughs> Things are bad, are they, Jack? Yeah. Since little Jimmy's been away, he's, um... Oh, I don't know, he's, uh... We're just not getting on, really, Ron, you know. I can't see any end to it. Anyway, you don't want to be listening to this, do you? I know how you feel about Jimmy and... Uh, all the trouble he's brought on you, I can't say I blame you. Right. I'll get off. Um. Will you tell our Lindsay I called round? Hey, hey, you just sit yourself back down. Come on, Jackie. I'm telling you, love, your Jimmy doesn't know how lucky he is to have you. Right, Ron Dixon. We've got the place to ourselves, and I've got plans for you. There's a plane about to leave for the wonders of Bevland. And you, my darling, have a first class ticket. Didn't know we had company. No, I, um, I just came to see our Lindsay. Yeah, well, she's not here, is she? No. Thanks for the tea, Ron. Then I'll get off. No problem, love. I'll see you out. <laughs> Don't forget, Ron. Bevlon beckons. <laughs> Thanks. It's nice to know we can still have a civil word for each other. Listen, Jack, if the other fella gets on your wick, get yourself back over here. The door's always open, and I've got plenty of time on my hands now. And a sturdy shoulder. <laughs> Thanks, Ron. I'll see you. Yeah. Ta -ra. Ta -ra. Yeah. This plane's taxiing on the runway. So what do we do now, eh? Dad, if we could just talk. Talk? Talk! Dad! Ollie, for heaven's sake, what are you Dad. doing? Dad! Leave her! Can you see? This is what we've got to do. Locking us in our rooms? You must be mad! 
That was no choice, you stupid. Oh. Come on, don't control yourself, please. Separate rooms. Locked doors. In my house, you will stay apart. Just look at yourself, will you? Have you gone mad? You've never hit any of us before. And now what, you want to lock us up like animals? This is crazy. Can't you see that? I'm doing what needs to be done. What? Slapping George? Don't you ever touch her again. We don't need locks. We're adults. We love each other. The new official Brookside magazine is available in the shops, priced £2.50.